What is up guys? Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. Thank you so much for joining us today because we got another tank test Thursday to show you. And this is the first one in a while, so we're going to make it really relevant to what's going on and something that will really help you guys out in your next outings on the water. So right now, we are pretty much mid-August, and so we've had two epic seasons in two different areas of Chinook fishing. Area 9 was lights out. It then transitioned over to Area 10. It's been really good. But there's a fishery that continues to keep getting to fish and has been building its momentum and building its steam since really the first part of July. And we're talking about the coho fishery. Now in July, at the beginning when everything opened up in Area 10 and some of these other spots, a lot of what you're catching were resident coho. So these are your three to four pound resident fish. And really they just stick local to Puget Sound. They don't go out into the ocean, but they are a absolute blast to catch. They are really great eating. And now that we're into the middle of August, we are starting to see a filtering in of some nice ocean coho showing. We're starting to see a lot of these nice fish showing up in the catches. So this is a perfect time to go over a test tank Thursday that really dives into just kind of a different look at how to rig up for coho. Specifically, we're going one style of technique. One of the really all around true, tried and true is a hoochie and a flasher. Everybody knows that that's pretty much what majority of the guys use. Tip it with a little bit of a herring fillet and you are golden. So I'm going to go today over the squid side rigging and like a fly side rigging. So there's a, a lot of different options out there. There's some great companies that make some awesome stuff. I'm going to give you guys a little bit to show uh, some opportunity differences that you guys can do. Um, and we'll throw it in the test tank and really show you guys how it works. So quick breakdown first of what I'm talking about for those that aren't familiar with a flasher and squid combination. So typically you're looking at an 11 inch flasher. This happens to be a hot spot. It's got UV, it's got glow, really works well. One of my favorite color combos is that one. Or you can throw something like one of these Dick Knight flashers which actually slide up and down the line really create a unique um, ability to fight the fish and not feel the flasher and this one's the red racer UV again one of my favorites here so I'm generally running a couple different types um, when I'm out there with a buddy in the boat but a flasher is gonna look like one of these two um, so you can go all sorts of color range, but UV and glow is really productive for coho. Then you're going to start looking at squid options. And I'll show you. When you go to the sportsman store or tackle shop, whatever you may have close to you, this is just, that's just a small selection of what I have. And those are just some normal productive colors. So it can be overwhelming when you walk into a sporting goods store and all you see is a whole shelf full of all these squid color combos and you don't really know what to get. So with coho, keep it simple. Glow in the dark, just like this guy here. Purple haze which is a white UV or something like a splatterback or a color combination of glow chartreuse deal. I'll figure out and put in the link descriptions the exact colors because off the top of my head I don't remember what those are but those are the Yamashita um, squids there. I think they're the five and a half inch. Um, so those are very productive. There's also these Ace High Flies, which are kind of a hoochie flash combination with the skirt built in, you can see there. Those are very, very, very productive. Then you have things like flies as the other side of the spectrum, 
like these Olympic tackle herring or you have I can pull it up here you have squid you even have candlefish so there are options out there for anything you can imagine so keeping it simple we will just stick with a rubber squid and a fly and there's a lot of great companies so if you want to check them out Yamashita is a great brand uh, Olympic Tackle has some great flies out there as well so let's then dive into how we're going to rig these up so again we're briefing this for you guys I apologize if some of this is repetitive to you more advanced fishermen but I really want to to give a sense of understanding how the system works um, when you're rigging this you're usually running I don't know about 36 inches max on your leaders because really you want that flasher as it rotates around that hoochie skirt or the fly is following the same pattern as the flasher spins the longer you have back the less action that squid has because it does not have anything that imparts action the closer you get the more that sucker whips so 26 to 36 is a great range to play around with figure out what the fish want to tell you now when I'm rigging up I keep all my leaders stored on a leader feeder these are 4 aught Matsuo sickle hooks all barbless um, for Puget Sound they're tied on 40 pound tests and again I believe they're 36 inches so what we're gonna do is you're just gonna be able to take the hook off just like so pull it straight out just like my other videos I've showed you guys and I'll put a link to how to use a leader feeder if you're inclined to want to see that um, but there you go now there are different ways you can rig this up to make it happen um, so just a simple way you can throw a couple glow-in-the-dark beads thread the skirt down you're good to go what we're gonna do because this I think makes it easier and it keeps the rig light if you have a really heavy squid it's not gonna fish well I take a glow-in-the-dark number 10 corky from Yakima bait I throw that down on top of the hook setup I then pull out two kokanee stack beads these are going in the dark I thread one down one way and one in the opposite direction so one goes down facing point down and one goes facing point up and this allows A very nice tapered body look and it fills up that squid you could even throw a second go in the dark corky if so needed but in the case of grabbing let's just uh, whatever I have the Olympic tackle fly there I showed you from the beginning So get that all thrown on and because you're using those stack beads like that it really presents a perfect spacing for the fly or for the hoochie and puts those hooks right at the tail base where you're going to be able to get a lot of strikes so let's take a look at this in the test tank and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about a squid rig here with beads as opposed to those stack beads these are the glow-in-the-dark beads or we will go ahead and throw this guy in and showcase the fly rigging there's an alternative couple that I will show to you as well with some blades on top um, but yeah let's take a look at it hey guys so check this out here is the squid rig with a tinsel skirt underneath 
and just look at the movement that this gets. Now, again, this is without any flasher, any anything. Now, our test tank is pulsating the current slightly, so you get the kick of the legs. But in a situation where you're trolling without any flasher, that's about all the movement that you get. But with the flasher, it rotates in the same axis as the flasher does. So you get a lot of whipping and extra action around. But that is your standard squid rig with three glow-in-the-dark oval beads. Works very, very well. And you tip that top hook there with a piece of the herring and you are golden. You can see where the positioning of the hooks are right at the tail end of the squid skirt to help you execute short strikes and be successful at landing those fish. So that is your standard squid rig. Let's look at a standard fly rig and then we will go into some alternates. Alright guys and here is our Olympic tackle fly and I really really like the action on this one as well. You can see just a little different with the way that it's rigged using those beads you can see an actual focal point through the uh, material body that those glow beads and that glow corky show through. Um, I think this could potentially add extra strike bonus because those fish come up to it and maybe that extra color or the glow really catches their attention but uh, a standard fly rig just like a hoochie skirt gives you the nice flash and movement only when it's paired with a flasher so let's take a look then next at an alternate rigging where we can add some different stuff above the squid or the hoochie skirt and really make a little more action on its own Alright guys, and here's one alternative. You can put a blade above, whether a Max Smile blade, this one happens to be a carnivore blade. It really gives it a nice big wobble action when you are pulling it through the water at those higher coho speeds. I'm going to try and see if I can't get that action for you going. But a blade in front is one option to add a little bit to your presentation. Now, one thing that you can also do when you're running blades, whether they're metal or these plastic blades, is you are going to want to extend the leader length. If you have it super short, like your 28 inch or whatever you may have, you may end up imparting too much action and affecting the way that the squid skirt rotates around your rigging. So I would extend this to at least be 36 inches if you're using a blade and that will really make a difference for your success. And here's the last alternative option. You have a wiggle fin or some kind of action disc. This can impart action to the squid or the fly as you can see here as it catches the current and trolling along you get an erratic almost crankbait light action added in there but again because it's adding its own action now just like you're fishing a spoon behind a flasher you want to put it back at least 36 inches if not 40 to 42 so it really adds action to it can be more effective but you want to make sure you keep uh, a little bit further distance behind the flasher to maximize the ability to catch fish with this rig but those are just a couple alternatives to the standard just regular beads um, under the squid skirt or the fly and guys this just hammers coho alright guys so there you have it a test tank Thursday on specifically for the coho fishing you're looking at squids you're looking at flies and a basic rigging of just some glow beads up above the double hook rig or you can do it with the stack bead alternate like I showed you but you want something that fills the profile of that body and then allows you from there your ability to then fish effectively and really those beads are there for hook placement 
Um, as you can see in the first rig that I ran through in the test tank, because of the way that this is in, you end up having those hooks placed perfectly at the base end of the squid skirt. That is what you're looking for. So that is the ultimate reason of using the spacing. You could do tubing if you wanted. Something that allows your ability to get everything in a position where you're gonna be more successful. So hope this helps guys. We're gonna have a lot more stuff on Coho coming real soon and hopefully get some other footage on the water and maybe even throw that underwater camera down again and get some epic wicked footage like we did just a couple years ago. So thanks so much for watching guys. Really hope you enjoy this. Stay tuned, there's so much coming. Give us a thumbs up, like us, subscribe. We got so much stuff. I am excited and I cannot wait to be back at this again. So thanks again. We'll catch you on the water. Take care and fish on.